and welcome um, to this um, to this um, <laughs> sorry to this periscope session about my uh, spice drawer. It's uh, great to see you here. Uh, welcome to the live viewers and welcome to the replay viewers as well. Um, so I am scoping from my Paris kitchen. My name is Clotilde Dussoulier. I am a food writer based in Paris and um, spices are so important to um, you know good cooking that I thought it would be fun to give you a um, sneak peek at my spice drawer. Um, so I have a spice drawer that's from an IKEA kitchen. IKEA kitchens remain, and I, I'm, I'm not saying this as an endorsed message, but they remain the cheapest um, alternative when it comes to building a kitchen. And we moved into an apartment that had an IKEA kitchen, and so when we redid it, we actually found that keeping, you know, changing all the cabinets but keeping it IKEA meant that, um, you know, this is what made sense for our space. Um, so I do use um, a drawer from that kitchen to uh, stash away my spices. Some people stash their spices in cabinets, but to me that doesn't make much sense because you don't really get a good view at um, what you have. So I'm gonna switch to um, uh, outside view here. So you can see the drawer and what it looks like. So it's actually closing in into my cabinet like this and I just pulled it, pulled it open. Um, I like to have a small space for my spices because it's easy to go crazy <laughs> with spices. Um, that it's best to keep um, your spice um, needs met at, with the minimum amount of spices. So I would rather go through um, some spices um, intensely for a short period of time and then move on to something else. So I'm sure that everything is always very fresh. Uh, rather than have a lot of spice mixes that do double duty and then you just forget about them and never use them. And when you do use them, they just don't taste like anything. They taste like dust. So um, again, I'm welcoming everyone. Please remember that throughout the scope, if you want to hit the lower right hand corner, that will send me hearts. And it's always, uh, you know, it's always a good encouragement. You can also type in your questions. I see that someone just asked what my favorite spice was, and we'll, we'll definitely get to that in a moment. Um, do you enjoy drying herbs? That's a great question as well. I'll get to it. And um, also just wanted to let you know, um, in case you're not a super um, experienced Periscope user, that you can uh, swipe up on iOS and swipe, no, swipe right on iOS and up on Android to invite your friends and followers to um, view the, this scope if you think they would enjoy it. So uh, thanks a lot for the share. And, um, um, oh, thank you. Someone, let, someone letting, letting me know that you can um, tap anywhere on the screen to send hearts. So that's that's good to know. As you can see, I'm still I'm still learning it. Um, so back to the spice drawer. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a few to talk about. And if there's anything that you see that you would like to um, to um, get specific information on, please please comment um, in the you know in the in the comment section. Um, so as you can see, I'm just using uh, either the spice jars that the spices came in or I'm reusing um, jars. For instance, the fleur de sel here, um, I'm just using, so this is my fleur de sel, which I use as a finishing salt only. Um, I'm just reusing a jar that I, I forget what was in this, it might have been a jam or something, because the fleur de sel came in a little cloth uh, bag, which I don't think is very uh, handy. So I just transferred it to a reused um, jar. Um, other spices come, um, I keep in, in the original bottle that they were sold in. Uh, and actually this is an original spice bottle, but these are mustard seeds that I bought in bulk and just transferred into this empty um, spice bottle. I like them tall and narrow so that you know when I can so that they fit neatly in um, my drawer and don't take up too much too much space um, I use masking tape those Japanese masking tape rolls that used to be really hard to find and so I bought dozens when I was in Japan and now you can find them everywhere in Paris um, so um, so this is um, these are nigella seeds again that I bought in bulk and just um, used this empty uh, jar to refill among the more the quirkier ones, um, I will mention the 
celery salt here, um, sel de celery in French. So this is a celery salt that I make myself by um, drying. So when I buy a bunch of celery, celery stalks, um, I keep the leaves and I dry them in the oven and then I mix them with salt. You can find the recipe on my blog at cnz.to. And so once the, once the celery leaves are completely dried, you can mix them with salt and you make your own celery salt. So um, you don't have to buy it and you also don't have to throw out the celery um, leaves. I use, um, so this is Clou de Girofle, so that's um, cloves. And um, also you'll see I have an, a, a nutmeg in there. Um, these I use in stews and I also add a few when I make, um, when I make stock. I find that it adds a good depth to um, my stock. This one I really love. It's, um, um, it's a, um, no, that's not the one I wanted to show you actually, sorry. I meant to show you the Shichimi Togarashi, um, which is a seven spice, a Japanese seven spice. Uh, that's pretty spicy actually. And I bought this in, um, in Kyoto from, uh, from a spice shop that was pretty intimidating because I couldn't understand anything that they were, you know, anything that was on the labels, but I did know that I wanted Shichimi Togarashi, which means, uh, uh, Shichimi I believe means seven. Um, and um, so I really like to add this to roasted when I roast vegetables um, but you have to be careful because it's it, it has quite a kick to it and you can find shichimi togarashi in any um, Asian supermarket um, I also have this which says uh, mole rub and this I, it's it's very dear to me because it's um, it's a homemade mole rub that a reader of mine her name is Edna um, she came to Paris and she took a tour because I give private tours to uh, people who come to Paris and want to experience, you know, behind the scenes and, and have a really insider's um, view of, of, of neighborhoods. And so she took my tour and she told me about this mole rub that she makes and she said she couldn't give me the recipe but that she would mail, uh, mail it to me and so she asked when my birthday was and um, when it was my birthday she sent me an envelope of this and when I opened it it smelled so good. And so I've been using it um, in beef stews and to rub chicken as well. What else do I want to show you? I want to show you this za'atar. Um, so za'atar is a spice mix as well. It has some sesame and um, sumac, which is a, um, an herb that's made from a dried bush. And um, so I get it from an Armenian spice shop um, down in the, in the ninth, but you can get it from any Middle Eastern shop and I, what I, one thing I really love, so it's good in pretty much anything. <laughs> you can add it to your salads for a really nice kick, but what I like to do with it is, uh, so za'atar, that's what it's spelled, um, usually spelled like. Um, what I like to do with it is I take um, pita wraps, I brush them with oil, and then I sprinkle some za'atar in it and um, roast them in the oven. So you get pita chips with, um, with a lot of, um, with a nice kick to it. Um, Another thing I want to show you is um, this. These are um, little bundles of um, spices to make uh, mold wine. So this is a ready-made thing that I, that I got. Um, so what you do is you just put the little muslin bag in um, either hard cider or red wine, and then you bring it up just under a simmer and you let it steep. And so this is really nice, um, you know, during this season, um, to make maybe something that you can drink while you decorate the decorate the Christmas tree. So I wrote on it vin chaud, which means mulled wine. Um, and then I have two jars of um, pimenton. Um, um, I love those jars; they just look so pretty. So this is smoked paprika from Spain, and so I have one that's um, dulce, which means that it's not spicy. And the other one is, I believe it's agridolce. Uh, let me make the focus. Yeah, agridolce, uh, which means that it's um, medium, medium spicy. I also have in there um, lemon peel that I've dried uh, myself. So whenever I use lemon and I don't need the rind, I keep the rind, I allow it to dry, and then I roast it in the oven and grind it. And this you can add to your cookies and to your cakes and it does a really, it provides a really concentrated um, lemon peel flavor that I really love. And again, it's all about, um, you know, keeping, you know, making the most of what you buy. 
Um, I have this uh, little mix of um, um, spiculose spices, uh, which I like to use. So it has cinnamon, aniseed, um, uh, ginger, nutmeg, um, coriander, and um, uh, what do you call that? Piment de Jamaïque is, um, I'm blanking on the name. Can someone help me with the piment de, de la Jamaïque? Um, it's a type of uh, peppercorn, um, a chili. And this you can make for spice, um, you know, spice cookies and also um, ginger spice bread, which is really, it's, uh, it's really good. Yes, um, allspice, is that allspice? Maybe it's, you're right, it's allspice. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Audra. Um, so this is what I wanted to show you. Oh yes, and also I have this jar of cumin. Um, and what I do with cumin is I buy whole seeds because um, I find that freshly ground cumin is just, it, it doesn't compare to um, ground cumin. In general, I try to buy my spices whole and I, um, I have an electric coffee grinder that I use just for, um, just for spices. So I try to clean, clean the mill uh, pretty thoroughly between spices so that my cumin doesn't taste like cinnamon and vice versa. Um, so I really encourage you to buy whole cumin seeds and grind them um, yourself. It really makes a big difference. Uh, in particular with, uh, so this is, uh, these are cardamom pods, green cardamom, and um, buying pre-ground cardamom is pretty much, I mean to me it doesn't really make sense because it just, it's not very, um, it's, it loses flavor very quickly. So I would rather open the pods and grind the seeds that are inside. And uh, finally, one thing I want to show you, because it's a brand that I have mentioned in the past because um, I, I've had a long-standing uh, relationship with them, is um, uh, Fresh Cinnamon from Cinnamon Hill. So it comes in those um, boxes, and as you can see, it's whole sticks, and the sticks are um, individu individually wrapped in this, um, so this is biodegradable, uh, a biodegradable wrapper. And um, this one is Cillin, um Cinnamon, and I use their grinder um, to grind the cinnamon fresh, which um, again makes all the difference. Um, so you just you just scrape the the stick on this on this really on this uh, really grating part, and um, it's also a beautiful object. I'm not sure if you can tell from from this image, but so the company is Cinnamon Hill, and you can find information about them um, on my website at cnz.to. Uh, oh yes, and one thing I wanted to show you also, which is pretty cool, it's um, it's a shis an essence of shiso. You know, shiso is the Japanese basil, and there's this company that makes a French company that makes um, uh, essences. It's not essential oils; it's a different technology to produce this. Um, but it's a it's a little spray that you can spray on your salads or your um, onigiri, your rice balls, or um, any rice dish. And so it's called it's called plante heureuse, which means happy plants, um, and, and it will give it a pretty potent um, flavor of shiso. And because shiso is an herb that is um, kind of hard to find here, I really like having this on hand. I would rather, in general, use um, um, the actual herb for most of my herb needs uh, because I think the color <laughs> really makes the color and um, you know of the herb in the actual dish plays a role. But this shiso essence is, is, really, is really cool to use. Um, so does anyone have any question about um, the spices that you see here? Maybe one that I haven't mentioned? Any questions? Um, so someone earlier was asking what my favorite spice was, and I think I would probably have to name cumin as my favorite spice just because I find that for the type of cooking that I do, it just, to me, it's really, it's the little black dress of spices. I add it to, um, to chicken. I add it a lot to my roasted vegetables because it gives them a nice earthy, deep um, tone. Um, I also like to add it to fish. It works really well with fish. There's something earthy about it that works well with um, um, seafood. And um, I just love the kind of lemony, slightly lemony flavor of, uh, of cumin. And uh, someone earlier was also asking me whether I, I like to um, uh, 
to dry herbs and actually I don't dry herbs very much. I find that when um, thyme and rosemary are in season and I have too much of them then I will dry them but otherwise when it comes to leafy herbs I find that you really lose um, the flavor quite quickly if you dry them so I would rather buy because I don't have a garden um, I would rather buy just what I need and if I have extra from one week to the other I will make pesto or I will freeze the herbs um, in oil or I will just um, freeze the herbs to add to my stock um, so um, Audra is asking about cumin and whether I use it from, you know, inspired by my time in the States or whether they use it in France a lot. We do. It's, it's one of the, uh, the spices that, are, that get used a lot in French, um, in French cooking. So it's something that I guess I grew up with. Um, also, because we have Moroccan, well, North African influences in French, um, in modern French cuisine, um, it's, it's, a, it's a spice that's used a lot in North Africa, so we definitely have um, uh, an affinity to that kind of flavors. Um, someone was asking me just a second ago why I freeze my herbs in oil. I find that um, if you're going to freeze herbs, uh, like leafy herbs, the oil is just more gentle. Um, and um, if you freeze in ice cubes um, and, and fill those ice cubes with the, with the oil, I find it just preserves the flavor better. And then you can just pop the ice cube of oil with herbs into whatever it is you're cooking and, um, and it acts as a kind of a, an instant flavor booster. Um, one viewer was also asking about uh, turmeric, um, uh, and I do use a lot of it. It's actually, I use so much of it that I keep it in a separate, um, you know, there's no, I, I have a big canister of it, so I don't keep it in my, in my spice drawer. Um, I just add a lot of it to stir fries and um, to um, just salads. I, I really like the flavor. Uh, you do have to be very careful with turmeric though. Uh, I have white countertops <laughs> and um, so you, you have to be really careful once you've added it to your dish that the dish doesn't spill onto your countertop. If you have wooden countertops or white countertops, um, it's, uh, turmeric stains things like fluorescent yellow, which can be a bummer. Uh, I've had that happen several times and so then I try to scrub with uh, white vinegar. Um, and um, so you're asking me if I grate the turmeric. I actually, most of the turmeric that I use, I use um, uh, dried and ground. So I just, it comes in a, in a, in a canister and I just sprinkle it on. Um, I do buy it fresh, but mostly when I buy it fresh, I um, add it to my juicer. Uh, so I, when, I ju when I make uh, green juices or just in general, you know, vegetable juices, I like to add some uh, ginger and some uh, fresh turmeric, in which case you don't even need to peel it. You just throw it into, into the chute for the, for the juicer. Are there any other questions about spices and using spices? Well, if that's, um, I guess that's... Um, all of your questions for now. Um, it was really fun to do this with you. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the shares. And I will see you on Chocolate and Zucchini, my blog, which is at cnz.to. Thank you so much. And um, I see that someone is asking about cold remedies. I'm sorry, um, Jill? Um, it's written so small at the bottom of the screen that it's hard to tell the name uh, uh, quickly. Jill is asking about cold remedies and it's really giving me a great idea for uh, another uh, Periscope session. So I'll work on that and I'll offer you uh, my cold remedies for another, another session. Thanks so much for the suggestion. I love it. Um, so I'll see you on Chocolate and Zucchini at cnz.to. Thanks so much for doing this with me. This was fun and I'll see you around.